Hey everybody. Uh, today I've got a lot on my mind, so this is probably going to go into being a big video. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, the Inquisitive Fish Guy, the IFG, uh, recently was gracious enough to invite me to his channel uh, to do a three-part video series on the nitrogen cycle, and we're discussing the various uh, chemical compounds within the nitrogen cycle. So I will put a link to our first video that we've released, or that he's released, I should say, uh, you can go check his channel out, give him a subscription, and then that way when parts 2 and 3 come out here in the very near future that we're still working on, you'll be subscribed already, you won't miss them. Um, but because of that, we've already shot the part with ammonia, and that's got me thinking a lot about ammonia. And while thinking about ammonia, I got to thinking about these different additives that we can put in our tanks that are said to render ammonia harmless. Uh, ammo lockers, detoxifiers, um, C-Chem Prime is one that comes to mind and that's the one that I actually was reading up on. So in the process of all of this it's led me down the rabbit hole to chlorine and chloramine and tap water and how municipal tap water is treated and all of this stuff ties together in our tanks and we even can throw in a pinch of how the pH affects all this. So I've got all that rolling around in my mind and I'm trying to put this into some sort of coherent uh, video that makes sense from start to finish and doesn't just jump all around uh, from place to place. So bear with me and let's hope we can uh, get through this in some sort of fashion that makes sense to everybody. So let's start with chlorine. Let's start with your tap water. Let's say you're somebody that uses Prime uh, when you do your water changes and you treat your tap water because you know it has chlorine in it or chloramine. Maybe you're not even sure. You just know you have municipal tap water and it's been treated with something and it's probably got chlorine in it. So you use Prime when you do your water changes. So what is chlorine? Why is it there? And then we'll get to what the Prime is doing to it and why that renders it harmless in your tank. Uh, chlorine is not a chemical compound, it is a element. So you can't really break chlorine down into anything smaller than chlorine. Chlorine is it. And it is a very reactive chemical and therefore it is a great oxidizer. And being a great oxidizer it has a lot of killing power. It's a very effective sterilizing agent when used in water. So while chlorine does a ton of things, uh, any compound that has a Cl behind it or is called a chloride uh, is actually made with chlorine. Um, you know, it's just it's one of those things that once you begin learning about it, it gets a lot less scarier. And I don't mind people being scared of chlorine in their uh, fish tanks, but I like the fear to be based on reality rather than based on the boogeyman of just it's chlorine, let's be scared of it. So chlorine is actually something that is, like ammonia, critical to life. We all need chlorine. In fact, um, half of what we think of as table salt, which is necessary for us to be alive, sodium chloride, it's sodium and chlorine. So chlorine, when used properly, etc., is not necessarily something to be terrified of. But when it's put in our drinking water for the purposes of sterilization, that is something to be very concerned about by the time it gets to your fish tank. Uh, very, very small amounts of chlorine will kill your fish. Uh, basically oxidizes their gills. It does all sorts of nasty stuff to their bodies once it starts getting absorbed into their bloodstream. So chlorine is not something you want your fish to be exposed to. The good thing about chlorine is it's a very volatile uh, chemical, and by volatile I mean it's highly evaporative. It leaves the water very quickly. The way you can treat your water if you don't want to put chemicals in it, like prime, if you want to simply remove the chlorine from your water rather than bind it and keep it in there, you can let your tap water sit out in an open container, say a bucket, a five gallon bucket. Uh, the rule of thumb is one hour for every gallon of water and the chlorine will simply evaporate out of the water and you will have chlorine free water after one hour per gallon. Um, it's, you know, back in the day it was always suggested you just keep a little reservoir of water ready and once a week when you do your tap, you know, your tank change, your water change, your water's been sitting out for a week. It's very much dechlorinated. So, Chlorine is not something to be too worried about in the sense of it's going to, you know, just get in your tank and you're never going to be able to get rid of it. It's going to be sneaky. 
um, and, and anything like that. Chlorine is very easy to deal with. Just, you know, if you've got a lot of tanks, a lot of water changes or something, that might get to be a bit labor intensive. But if you've got a 10 gallon or 20 gallon tank or whatever, just prepare your water a few hours in advance before you do your water change and let it sit out and you've dealt with your chlorine. It's very easy to deal with. So because of that, a lot of municipalities that treat your water and sterilize your water will actually treat your water with a chemical called chloramine. And what chloramine is, is chlorine that is very volatile bound with an ammonia molecule which is not and therefore this chloramine which is not chlorine and it's not ammonia it's chloramine it's something different now that has a lot more staying power it's a little less toxic it doesn't quite have the killing power it's not the oxidizer that chlorine is but it's pretty close and it still should be thought of pretty much equally as dangerous for your fish so this is the bigger concern when we do our water changes if we simply let the water sit out chloramine will not get out of your water the way chlorine will an easy way to find out whether you've got chlorine or chloramine well the easiest way is simply go on the website and check all your water municipalities should uh, have to be po publicly posted whatever's in your water. However it's treated, they should give you the breakdown of everything that's in it. Uh, the total dissolved solids, the pH, everything, the hardness, you should be able to find that readily available uh, online. If you want to test for it yourself uh, and you don't have the capacity to test for chlorine, you can simply take a small amount of water, say a glass full of water, let it sit out for an hour or two, and test it for ammonia. If it's testing positive for ammonia, or you can even try testing it right out of the tap, if it's testing positive for ammonia, there's a pretty good chance that you've got chloramine in your water rather than chlorine. So let's get back to putting the additives in the water, if that's how you want to treat your water. What does Prime do to make your water magically safe and protect your fish from this chlorine and chloramine and ammonia and everything else it claims to protect your fish from. Well, first of all, the chlorine is very easy to deal with. It just simply binds something. I don't know exactly what the something is or what it converts the chlorine into, but it binds to the chlorine. The chlorine is rendered harmless. It is bound for life. It will never become a harmful chemical again to your fish. The chlorine is simply dealt with. The ammonia, however, that has now been knocked free of your chloramine molecule, you've now got ammonia in your tank. Well, they've also got something in there for that and what they do is however the compound works it basically forces an additional hydrogen molecule or hydrogen atom onto the ammonia molecule thus converting it from NH3 ammonia to NH4 which is ammonium again different compound I know we all like to think of it's a different version of ammonia it's, it's, it's not it's not ammonia it's now ammonium which is not harmful to your fish and it is now bound up with this additional hydrogen ion and it's safe for your fish. Now if you look at your test kits, your test kits will say NH3, NH4. They all test for both ammonia and ammonium. So if you treat for ammonia and you've treated with Prime and you take a test, you're going to still get a positive reading, but it doesn't mean you've got free ammonia in your tank. It simply means that there's ammonium compounds in your tank and having been treated with the Prime, it's going to be this ammonium, this NH4, that is not harmful to your fish. Now, I do talk about pH occasionally and I do talk about water chemistry in regards to other aspects of your tank. If your pH is below 7 and you're into acidic water, ammonia is going to naturally be forced to have an additional hydrogen ion and is going to become ammonium in your tank simply from the acidic water, the high pH level or the high number of free hydrogen ions in your water is going to force them onto this ammonia molecule thus rendering it harmless ammonium. Most of us out there, I'm not included in this, most of my tanks are actually on the uh, south side of the 7 line, 
Uh, most peoples are not there. Most people are neutral or above. And in that case, the additional hydrogen ion wants to break free from that ammonia, and it wants ammonium, I'm sorry, and it wants to convert back into ammonia. The higher the pH, the harder it's trying to get back to ammonia. So you're in a different situation if you have a 7.6 pH tank or an 8.2, 8.4 pH tank. And what happens when you put the prime in there is the prime is doing the same thing. It's binding an additional hydrogen ion onto the ammonia, but it's doing so forcibly and it can only do so for so long before it breaks free and the ammonia becomes free ammonia again. So you've got anywhere from 24 to 36 hours after treating with prime before your ammonia that was converted into ammonium breaks back down into ammonia and becomes dangerous again. The whole idea behind it is that window of time that you're buying yourself should be enough time to allow your tank's natural processes, your natural nitrogen cycle, to deal with the ammonium. Because plants will take up ammonium more readily than they will take up ammonia because they convert the ammonia to ammonium anyway internally so if they can find ammonium in the water they'll pull it right out so even though it's been treated even though it's harmless to your fish it still needs to come out of your water because it's still a ticking time bomb so if you've got an uncycled tank if you've got a tank where your nitrogen cycles out of whack don't think that just simply pouring prime in there is going to solve your problems because it's only buying you a little bit of time you still need to do water changes you still need to get your nitrogen cycle back in line and doing water tests isn't going to tell you whether you're safe or not because it's always still going to read a positive test for the ammonia compound either NH3 or NH4 so you're really playing with fire if you're putting all your faith into this stuff being bound and locked away forever. As far as the nitrites, um, Seachem themselves apparently on their own website say they don't really even understand the process of what's going on or why it seems to render nitrites harmless. Um, that's probably because nitrites are not that terribly dangerous for your fish. I will be getting into that uh, very soon. Um, and then, of course, nitrates are not terribly dangerous for your fish at all. And if you're doing any kind of regular water changes, you simply don't have to worry about that. So companies can claim they're making the nitrates harmless all they want. They weren't harmful to begin with, so they're not, you know, they're, they're claiming to do something that they didn't need to be doing in the first place. But as far as the ammonia and the ammonium and the chlorine and the chloramine, that stuff is all things that will kill your fish fairly quickly. It's very toxic to your fish. <clears throat> Excuse me, and it's very common in our aquariums. Um, one of the things that got me thinking about all of this was the question of where does ammonia come from and how does ammonia get in our tanks? And of course, we all know the you know the the detritus in the tanks, the food, the waste, the fish waste, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But someone suggested that ammonia can get in your tanks from your tap water. Now they were a little misguided as to how they thought the ammonia got into your tank in the tap water. But they were right in the sense that ammonia can get in your tank in the form of chloramine. Or if you've got a well, you may have ammonia in your tap water because you may have dissolved you know, stuff breaking down in your well itself and you might actually have issues that are something altogether different. So if you've got a well like I do, uh, this is not really the video for you. Uh, I know I do have a well, so this doesn't apply to me at all. I don't use any additives. I have no chlorine. I have no chloramine. Um, it, nothing. I, I just don't use anything at all in my tanks. I don't run carbon. I run nothing in my tanks other than a filter pad and biofiltration, and that's all I need. Um, so I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where I'm, I'm working in circles here. But the long and short is that the chlorine in your water is there for a reason. Don't gripe about it and complain about it. Back in the day before our water was sterilized, a lot of people died from sepsis and typhoid and everything else. It's good that they do this, but be aware that they do it. And educate yourself as to what is actually in your water. Do you have chlorine or do you have chloramine? If you've got the chlorine, you can simply let your water sit out for one hour per gallon and it will be dechlorinated. If you've got the chloramine, that's something a little different. You may have to use an additive or something, but remember, it only binds the ammonia up temporarily. You still need a very fully effective and functioning 
nitrogen cycle going on in your tank to deal with the ammonia once it's been bound up by these additives you've put in it. It's not this magic eraser that just vanishes them from your tank. Your tank still needs a fully functioning and well adapted nitrogen cycle. You have to have a good balance between the volume of nitrifying bacteria versus the bioload of your tank. And you have to account for any additional chemical compounds you may be adding during these water changes. Again, just keep in mind that pouring this prime or whatever you're using into your water doesn't magically make it go away. It simply converts, binds, changes, and it buys you a little bit of time and then your tank still has to deal with all of those compounds that are still in there. So hopefully that made sense. I feel like I got most of that out of my system now. Uh, feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Certainly critique me on points where you think I might be wrong. I'll be more than happy to do more research and find out whether I am or not. So if you're not already subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to go check out IFG's website. I will put a link below, as I said. And you want to make sure you subscribe to him because the next part in our series is going to be on nitrite. And we're working on that now, so stay tuned. That should be coming out real soon. And again,